We've learned something new about Disneyland and potentially Walt Disney World. And folks, because of who we are and what we know, we've connected the dots enough to say that something you were hoping for, something big, something fun, is probably now no longer on the way. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Welcome back to the happiest place on YouTube. We're here to tell you about entertainment, keep you ahead of that culture curve. Today, we've got an exclusive, and we're talking to you about what is going on with Pandora, Avatar, and even Autopia. Disneyland appears to not be doing exactly what they said they would be doing back when Bob Iger wanted you to be all excited once more. It's another case of blue sky fever. Folks, get ready for a panel and insight like you have not seen before. Uh, ba -ba -ba, this out of 11 Eyewitness News ABC Disney plan, uh, Disneyland plans to electrify Autopia, convert popular attractions, gas-powered cars. This coming out uh, about 16 minutes ago, and here is the article. Get off of here, video. We do not want you to ding us. All right, out of Anaheim, plans are in the works to replace the gas-powered cars at Disneyland's popular Autopia attraction as part of the Anaheim Resort's ongoing decarbonization efforts and its goal of net zero emissions, Disney officials said. Folks, don't be distracted by thinking that this is a small thing. We're going to explain how it's a big thing. I bet Bash is already figuring this out. Here we go. Oh, Since yes. opening with Disneyland Park in 1955, Autopia has remained a guest favorite, most popular, with young kids experiencing driving for the first time. Jessica Goode said in a statement, as the industry moves towards alternative fuel sources, we have developed a roadmap to electrify this attraction and are evaluating technology that will enable us to convert from gas engines in the next, folks, listen, the next few years. Also, let it be said that if they're doing this with Disneyland, you can just about be guaranteed it's coming to the Tomorrowland Speedway in Magic Kingdom at Disney World. Whether the cars will be replaced by electric cars or high... Could, oh, I can't read that. <laughs> too stupid. Disneyland's resort net zero emissions target includes... Okay. Okay. All right, we're done. We're done with this article. We're going to make them be hybrids. Come on. All right, guys. Um, Vash, here is why this matters so, so much. And I know you already know this, but once I hand it to you, take off with the running. We have heard, and going into the proxy battle, remember, we had to have the vapid headlines. We had to have all this big stuff. We had to have the previous quarterly earnings report be all this grandiose things from Bob Iger. What did we hear? We heard that we were getting an avatar land. We were getting Pandora from Walt Disney World. Maybe not exactly the same, but a full-blown Pandora experience coming to Disneyland. And where would that have to go to make it possible? Autopia. And now right. we have this statement coming out after the major institutions have voted. And now they're admitting we're going to keep Autopia for years. So this means to me, Vash, that wherever they're going to put Pandora in Disneyland, everybody out there, all the pixie dusters, all the vlogs, blogs, and YouTubers who were posting, oh, it's coming, it's coming, here's all the acreage. Folks, you've been bamboozled by the mouse. Once again, you're getting yeety bitty little living space. Vash, tell us why this matters. Uh, it's it's absolutely huge because Autopia takes up a significant portion of real estate uh, in that section of the park right there. And honestly, it sits on the last real expansion path that Disneyland has until you have to start demoing uh, quite a bit of it right here. So a lot of people had speculated if 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 it's uh, including myself, actually, if it was going to go in Disneyland, that's where uh, it would naturally be placed with this you know, it's not quite announced, but it's them kind of looking into it next few years kind of thing. Sorry, my camera's going a little s s south on me. I do apologize. Uh, but, uh, you know, with this with this, with this, this news right here, it, it really does signify that Autopia is, it looks like, to be safe going forward. You can see the, you can see the site plan right here. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Pro Jonas, for bringing this up. Do, do appreciate it. You can see where the cursor is placed right now and where he's, where uh, the uh, cameraman is viewing in right there. Right. You can see the submarine voyage, the lagoon right there. I believe it's dry in this in this uh, 
in this aerial view, which is interesting. And then right next door is where Autopia, the load unload area is. Beyond that right there, you can see like the spaghetti bowl that uh, the monorail is currently occupying right now on your screen. That track right there. That, a lot of that is Autopia, and that would have to necessarily be removed uh, or, or reshaped in some way in order to open up this area and, and really capitalize on the about eight acres that exists back there. So Vash, where can they now put Disneyland's Pandora expansion that was going to be on par with Disney World and amazing and incredible up until it was time for the votes to be counted? Well, I see with with this area off the table at Disneyland Park, there really is no place that really fits the bill. There is a small pad. Uh, I believe it was earmarked for the third attraction between Star Wars Galaxy's Edge and Toontown. Without yeah. that, though, I mean, which is about, and, and that's, about big enough for a restaurant is what that's how that's how big that expansion pad is. Right. It, well, I, I mean, the, the re there is a restaurant pad that's that's still available, although it's kind of extra um, uh, waiting for uh, for Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run if they so need it. But there there is a little bit of a pad there. But it's it's like you said, it's it's very very small, maybe an attraction. So Avatar right now, uh, I mean, unless you want to really get into Disneyland Ford, might just be California Adventure. Uh, yeah. And, and here's the thing. Disneyland Ford, if you're waiting for that, that's not going to be for five, ten years. Yeah, and look, the, the best they could hope for is a little bit to the northeast to have like a an overhead bridge that was the queue that would take you, or the 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 you know the the pathway that would lead you back to Pandora, going across the street there to the northeast because there is nothing. I I thought this was a ridiculous idea to begin with. They really would have to have a third gate. Because you can't put this as the way Disneyland currently is, Disneyland Resort currently is with the two parks, the hotels, and all of that. There's there's not a significant enough footprint. It, uh, it, I want to say it was somewhere between 13 and 19 acres um, that would be required to build a proper Pandora. Is Am I wrong? No, you're exactly right. In culture, this I, I think the story here is that this is another example of the Disney parks announcing via their CEO heading into this uh, this vote, major news, right? Huge news. Who can believe it? Oh my gosh, what are they going to build? And, and now we get the news out just in time, right? Just in time, we get the news that the land that everyone thought that's the only place it can go, it's not going to be used for that. And so whatever you're going to get is going to be teeny weeny, itsy bitsy. And, uh, you know, it, it's, a, I don't know how much longer even the even the pixie dusters, they're going to run out of they're going to run out of stuff to talk about, because you can't you can't just do blue sky paintings forever. So, I, I think that's the news panel. Any other thoughts on this? Yeah, I, I'll just I'll just point out that uh, Bob Iger announced an Avatar experience, and then about a month ago he accidentally said an Avatar land, and then Disney did a recap of that same event. It was a Morgan Stanley event. And they removed the word land from his statement and talked about an avatar experience again. Yeah. Um, so, and I'll say, Jonas, we could, we could make fun of the people who were trying to dunk on us on Twitter. And we said, no, 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 trust us. He, he, he did not like, this is not going to happen. And there were people dunking on us, you know, and oh my gosh, oh, you guys, we're getting an avatar. And just, you know, we're not going to put their posts back up here. We're not going to give them attention. I'm just telling you, you this can't go on forever. Keep going, John. The I, other right. thing is, if, is if they are saying that they're going to do an Avatar Land and it's part of, say, Disneyland Ford, that means that they uh, definitely counted those chickens before they hatched because they absolutely they didn't have approvals for it before they announced it on a uh, on a Securities and Exchange Commission uh, scrutinized earnings call. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it was clear that Iger wanted the big splashy headline like he does. Remember, this was the first earnings call uh, in which time he was for hosting. The vote. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, well, I, I was referring to. Well, well it's, it's interesting you you say that because that was previously with the previous proxy battle back in uh, 2023, yep. right when Iger retook the seat. That was his first earnings call. That's when we originally heard Avatar coming to Disneyland, and I think he he you know he wanted the big you know kind of splashy 
uh, announcement to take away from those poor numbers right there and didn't know, necessarily know the dire situation that the company was in. It wasn't until I think it was even weeks or months months later when I think Jonas, when he participates in some kind of Morgan Stanley conference or something mm -hmm. where he even says, he's like, oh, I'm still getting my, my arms around the business. We'll see on this or that and the other thing. And then I think when he finds out, it's like, uh-oh, we can't necessarily invest in big in big expansions like this. That's when he, uh, that's when it goes dark for a while right there. But now that Disneyland Ford looks like it's, it looks, it's looking to be coming around back again. Maybe there are opportunities in DCA, maybe they're a little bit more comfortable revealing a little bit more. I think that 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 whole thing has changed right there. But I think you're right, Jonas. I think that he put the cart before, before the horse uh, in a big way with this one. Can or, I just... or, or, let us remember that Autopia most recently is sponsored by Honda. And I have no long, idea how long that deal was slated to run. But maybe this was all a way of renegotiating that deal to keep it going and telling Honda, well, you know, if you guys don't want to renew, uh, we'll put avatar there and say, thanks a lot. And I guess, yeah. I guess, you know, that I hate to be ulterior motive and I have no knowledge, but Honda put a lot into that, changing it over yeah. to the Honda Autopia, the Honda cars. Yeah. Yeah. And for those, and out Honda, of the by the way, is selling, unlike some of the other car companies that are bailing out of it, they're still making a big deal out of selling electric cars. Uh, I'm looking, they get a $7,500 federal rebate, a $1,000 California rebate. They get to, uh, I didn't know this. Did you know that you can, if you have an electric car, apply with the DMV to get an HOV sticker, even if you're not crippled and nobody else is in the car with you? I didn't know that. I didn't know. I know I I'm reading Honda's, a car and driver's site about, uh, electric cars and Honda. Uh, <laughs> If you get their hydrogen fueled one, they give you fifteen grand towards hydrogen. Uh, they're doing everything they can to keep these things alive, even while the big guys, Ford and GM, are backing away. Um, I just sort of think there's some Honda in this mix of of, of this announcement somewhere. And I, I would say too, there have been some out in the chat, you know, saying maybe Tesla will sponsor it, uh, folks. Disney, I don't know if you know, doesn't get along with Tesla. If somebody's going to try to blackmail me with advertising, blackmail me with money, go f*** yourself. Do you know how long they're going to shut down Atopia for to make that happen? Oh, it's going to be, I would imagine, a long time because you've you've got to find a way to charge these things. That's, what, while yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say, Bash. Yeah. No, no, no. It'll be a continuous electric supply. <laughs> oh, you think they're going to? You think they're going to wire the roads? They're going to have to. Oh, okay, okay. But that's no. but, but that's even a longer process. Oh, I'm it saying. is, and, and yeah, and they just redid the track when they redid the the Honda thing, which was what eleven years ago, twelve Something years like that, ago. Yeah. Well, that hopefully, long? hopefully they don't bury the pucks in the wrong spot this time, preferably. Well, there's Ooh. a well, there's a bigger problem here. Okay, so let's assume that they do that. First of all, doing that without in a way that will not allow for anybody to electrocute themselves is going to be a fun time. The not second to mention thing, uh, uh, power washing it at night. Yeah, ah. well, yeah. They, they don't have a good. They don't have a good track record with that right now. Speaking a track of track record, yes, a yeah, track record. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. If they go but, with a continuous rail system, though, that would reduce ROI by substantially because of the batteries and all that. But go, sure, sure. I mean, they could certainly redesign the undercarriage of the vehicle so that they could use the rail as the primary, uh, the primary source of electricity. Certainly, sure. but they would have to safeguard against accidental accidental Absolutely. electric yep. electrocution. So they, regardless, it, it's certainly going to take its own time. But removed from that, now they have to redo their electrical infrastructure in that area. They already have some problems because of the submarine uh, attraction that's right there and sure. it all the problems that come along with that, which is why there was no way they were going to dig down and put in footings for building out Pandora there. That's why I poo-pooed that to begin with. But the main the, the thing I was trying to get to is because I could throw out all the problems there are with doing this anyway, mm. is that um, you're going to lose another massive attraction uh, that eats people. Yeah. Again, right after you just did it. I mean, D Disney is really they're they're not they're not adding to. They are replacing or dumb dumb grading or downgrading what they have as far as offerings. They're literally stripping out the value and the difference, the Disney difference out of their parks. And at the same time, 
they're going to hit their capacity again for two years. I mean, they're, this- they're a lot of the a lot of the decisions now culture are around mm-hmm. reducing ROI. I believe Braden has made a series of tweets about this. Mickey views um, right. uh, about how it's like, OK, well, Country Bear Jamboree, for example, it's like, OK, well, we have a lot of aging audio animatronics. Let's go ahead and replace those with something that's low maintenance. Same with uh, Splash Mountain to Tiana's Dude, by Adventure. Is, Same. You know, is, it doesn't add any capacity, but it reduces reduces these costs and yeah. you just kind of you kind of have to wonder like you said culture it's like these don't necessarily add anything to these parks they just they just reduce them for managers and operations but they don't they don't add any intrinsic value for guests certainly uh, per the investment you're not getting any more capacity so obviously we're not gaining any experience there for guests it's just a lot of bizarre decisions that uh yeah i mean sure it looks good in the spreadsheet but uh, are we necessarily spending in the right places where we could be adding capacity otherwise it, it well it's unsustainable corporate greed profit profit taking is what they're trying to do and they're trying to do it on the th- uh, this reminds me do you remember paul pressler Sure. Oh, absolutely. I've heard the sure. name. Yes. Is it, isn't this just remarkably similar to that era of disaster? Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> it's it's not it's not too far off. I mean, with Paul Pressler though, he would close stuff, you know, <laughs> versus uh, re- at least reducing ROI so these things could con- could continue to and operate. Visibly cut back on cleanup oh. and that sort of thing. Too. Well, yeah. If we go to if we go to, Mad- if, we go to if we go to Disney World, it's not uh, it's not too far off on that whole closing things. I, I can name you about uh, oh, that's a fair point. At least a dozen interior spaces that are completely unused now and that reduce capacity. To the point, though, we're I'll... not that far off. We really yeah. aren't. Yeah. This is uh, a very know. basic comment, but uh, I like the smell of Autopia. It is a different atmosphere <laughs> when you get there. Ladies and gentlemen, dreamers of all ages, we have come to the end. We call it the kiss goodnight if you're at Disney World's Magic Kingdom. But today, we hope you feel all right on the way out. Fret not! Just because you're not getting that expansion, we will continue to hold the line and hold Disney to doing good things, despite the fact they would rather not spend a single dime on any of it. Folks, as you leave, consider clicking the like button, share, subscribe, click it, stick it to the algorithms, it's the notification bell, and drop a comment down below. Wherever you are and whatever you're doing, keep learning, keep growing, and keep having fun.